Oh, Welcome to the first episode of the Divergent Delay podcast. Musical Underworld is dead. Of the water. Today we're going to be having the frontman from probably one of the most influential psych rock bands from all For time. real. John Dwyer from the OCs. OCs. The OCs. Their, their new album, A Foul Form, is out now. Check it out. It's like punk. Buy it. All right. Amazing frontman. Amazing energy. This man is a beautiful man, okay? I love his facial hair, okay? Yeah. Just beautiful. Hair. Yeah. He, he gives an amazing stage presence with his band, The OCs. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I highly suggest uh, going to one of their shows. They're going on, they're going on tour mm-hmm. uh, starting late this month, I'm pretty sure. Isn't it a U.S. tour or is it? U.S. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Uh, they're based out of San Francisco. Um, uh, and... They are one of the most influential psych rock bands. I'm so sorry I'm late. I, uh, I'm building a studio down here in L.A. and it's taking up all my bandwidth in my brain. And uh, yeah, I just I screwed up. Sorry about that, guys. Hi, That's John. Nice yeah. To you all. yeah. Yeah, nice to meet nice you meet too. You too. Uh, how are you? <gasps> my dog's going to bark a lot when he hears your voices. <laughs> Who's <got> that? <laughs> <laughs> hey, come on. Go lay down. Go on. Buddy, no, no, no. Sorry, it's been a very tumultuous day. How's yeah. the podcast going? Um, uh, this is this is our first episode in a while. Months, I think right? the last one we did was in like February. Wow. Just, yeah. That so you guys are just taking your time. <laughs> yeah, we we reached out to quite a few bands, and usually it's just like they're busy at the moment. But mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> You've been pretty busy too. I, I know dude, it's it's unrelenting. That's why I forgot I had this, even though I reminded myself like ten times and had an alarm set and everything. So. Oh yeah, yeah. I What's your you. band called? Uh, uh, Divergent Delay. Yeah. Good name. The double D. The thread. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. It sounds yeah. heavy. Is it heavy? Yeah. Oh uh, yeah. We do quite a few different things. Actually, we recently like played at a festival uh, that was just like for metal music. So we had to do some of our heaviest stuff we've done that we played at psycho uh either a year or two ago in vegas and it was like cannibal corpse primitive man suffocation like the most heaviest of the heavy and it was like our band which felt totally absurd but we managed to uh learn a a fairly heavy set and i think we pulled it off you got to be versatile man you know that yeah Yeah. one of the things we actually did that festival is we played toe cutter thumb buster oh yeah Oh, yeah. Right. Did you get any nerdy teenage boys recognizing the song? <laughs> I wish that I was. Yeah. I was hoping someone would recognize it. It'd be cool. Yeah. But we a, are, a lot of people are a cult boys. band at best. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, see. you got the new album. I got it back there. Oh yeah, oh, man! Yeah. Right on! Right on! Right. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that was a slow burn to get that out because of the uh, the vinyl industry being kind of backed up right now but it got together it came together it actually yeah. showed up surprisingly early suddenly after being delayed forever you know so yeah it's yeah. crazy how fast the rainbow splatter one sold out yeah i know i i mean personally i like black vinyl you know i like i always just buy the black version of the record but people love colored vinyl and it is fun i don't know why i like black records i just always have like radiated you know towards like uh I have very little colored. I buy colored vinyl by accident sometimes. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, you know. But yeah, I really. Uh, but people love that man. It's like, uh, yeah. I mean, mostly I, I love seeing people on like Discogs being like the flippers, like getting mad at the people who buy them and then turn them around. They're like seven hundred dollars, and you're like, what? This is like a fourteen dollar record, man. You know. So, but yeah, yeah. I'm glad you got it. it. What you got the splatter or no? I just got the black vinyl because that that record should be black man it's like a yeah. dark ominous punky simple yeah. simple thing you know black yeah, and it feels it feels like a classic punk album you know so right on i appreciate that i'm old enough to be almost uh official so yeah yeah, yeah. It's, it's a really good album um so uh how was it um like you know coming up with the idea for the album just the production behind it um we had set out we rarely every now and then we'll kind of have a basic idea of like what we want to do going in it almost never pans out that way you know like you'll have an idea and be like i want to make you know we would you would think like we'd be like i want to make a prog record 
because I was listening to a lot of proggy stuff or whatever. And it sort of takes shape that way, but often it ends up somewhere where we didn't expect, which is kind of a pleasant surprise. Like even my own band will sometimes I'd be like, this is not what I expected by the time the record's done, you know? Whereas this record, we set out with a very clear, uh, you know, nice, this guy's a maniac. Um, yeah, exactly. We set out with a very clear idea and because it was so primitive and was in a lot of our wheelhouses from old bands and stuff, you know, I've been in a few hardcore and metal bands, like it was actually kind of just like, so like flowed right out of us. It was really fun to write. Um, it's I think it sounds deceptively simple. There's a couple songs on there that we're actually going to start practicing tomorrow because we haven't really played them live yet. And the last time we inkle, like screwed around with them at a sound check, I was like, this sounds terrible because we turns out we didn't know our own song. So we're working on that this week to relearn some of these these punk bangers. But it came out pretty close. I think because I was the main engineer and producer on this one, I was just at my house. I brought in everybody and we just recorded it here in my basement. I kept it really simple. A lot of 57s, cheap mics, you know. I think a lot of those old records sound great out of necessity because people didn't have fancy shit, you know? So like SM57, the old standby, kind of sounds good on everything, really. I even sang into one, which I never do. And I was like, wow, SM57, like the one I had was broken. So when I was singing into it, you could hear it clunking. So I literally, when I mixed into Pro Tools off tape at the end, I had to go in and like pull out all these clunks of me being like, Ugh! like you could hear it like rattling while I was standing there holding it in my hand. Yeah. I also had COVID when I was singing it. I wasn't super sick, but it definitely made my voice more awesome. And I have a hard time achieving that level of nastiness again without being sick. So we'll see. We'll see how it goes live, you know? Dude, we need another yeah. COVID. That, that, was, those old mics really that was interesting helped. how Give it, it, you know, helped because yeah, definitely yeah, get... It really did. It worked out. It was right over Christmas. I sang on Christmas Day. I finished the record just by myself here with the dog at the house. You know, it was like... Cool sort of kismet it felt like i was supposed to have covid then because i was like okay i actually have to stay home it's the perfect time to finish the record you know because otherwise i would have waffled more it being the holidays and with all the cheer in the air you know all that mm -hmm. so yeah yeah did you feature the dog on the record he is not on the record because this one's mix was so aggressive it was even wearing me out to mix it like at the end of a day i would be like cross-eyed from mixing this record it was full of so many aggressive frequencies that i normally we keep we have those frequencies in our record but not to the excess that they are on this record so the dog the second i would start screwing around with this the dog would just get up and leave he wanted nothing to do with it i think it was like all dog whistle you know sort of tones and whatnot so i got you you have some uh, some interesting uh, artwork in the background. Uh, what do you know what that is? What, can you tell us? Yeah, this, is, this is a piece uh, by Kyle Ranson, who's done a bunch of our records uh, back in the day at my house. And then this is a piece by Johnny Negron, who's this marker artist down in, uh, I don't know if he still lives in Austin or not, but his stuff is really incredible. Okay. And I ran out of space at my house because I have so much shit and so many paintings from, you know, I buy paintings to get art from people that I started stacking art. <laughs> so like I found a piece that sort of fits over the other piece. And when my friend that did the mural came over and saw that, he was like, hmm, I could tell he wasn't uh, chuffed that I had put a painting over his painting, but yeah. oh, undeniably man. they match. Yeah. Yeah, they do. Yeah, I can give you guys a tour if you want. You want to see some stuff? Sure. Yeah, cool. That'd be cool. That would be um, great. Let's see. Don Dwyer house tour. Yeah, I haven't done this on a Zoom call yet. This is the you. giant lenticular we did of the Panther Rotate record cover. I don't know if you can see, it's really hard to film, but it's a 3D nauseating cat butthole from the cover <laughs> of, uh, from the cover of uh, uh, Panther Rotate. And I collect these like weird uh, giant uh, 70s black light posters. This is one of King Kong from, uh, they were from like, I think the joint is called. It's called the Hanging Plants. Yeah, it's called Pro Arts. So it's like this weird 70s Houston, Texas uh, screen printing place. Does really dope stuff. And then I got really into these posters from Ghana, which I'm sure you all have seen before, the movie posters. Uh, this is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre hand-painted mm -hmm. poster from Ghana. This guy in my hometown sells these on eBay, and they're painted on old flower sacks. And they're really uh, awesome. Let's see. I got, another, I got another good one over here. This is... Uh, that's... Uh, American Werewolf. I like that all the Ghana paintings have uh, some nonsense that wasn't actually in the movie, almost always. Like a Kung Fu movie that'll have like a robot, you know, and you're like, there's no robot. That's that's it. That's it for the tour for now. I'm not going to bore you with my whole house. But yeah. uh, is that a projector? Yes, yes. I'm watching a, a documentary 
on HBO about a cult right now. It's, I got you. Uh, I often will play guitar just over some nonsense on TV. I grew up with a lot of television, so I, got I think you. it was like a real point of contention with my ex-girlfriend that the TV was always on. She's like, it's so annoying. And I was like, I don't even notice. But this has been really interesting, and I just play guitar while I watch it. You know. Yeah, I think it's awesome. really nice to you know be inspired by film and stuff because absolutely yeah yeah Yeah. i will like get up in the middle of the night uh like i read every night before i go to bed and i'll like have to like wake up and get up and like write something down because of something in the book that like turned a key in my mind you know but it's like you're all all comfortable in bed you're like shit and you have to like get up and go write something down because i'll totally forget it if i don't write it down you know yeah what What about you in the back you got any questions quiet quiet person (laughs) i've been talking i guess i'm not close enough to the mic oh yeah yeah Go ahead. Um, anyway, sorry. Sure. Closer. Closer. Ah, scooch, saw... up. scooch up, man. Uh, I saw when you were walking around, you had a stand-up bass. Do you play that? Uh, I, I screw around on it. I certainly don't kick ass on it, but I uh, I got that from Emmett Kelly, who plays in Ty's band. and used to do a mm-hmm. band called uh, Cairo Gang. It's a beautiful awesome. 1920s german flat back bass it sounds incredible but this guy that i play with now doing some of the improv stuff is a really great stand-up player mm-hmm. and i played his the other day and realized that mine definitely needs a setup because his sounds mm-hmm. incredible mine's like really hard to play and his is like butter so he's going to take a look at it and uh that'll probably end up at the studio we're building because it's such a beautiful thing that i feel like people should play it and put it on their records you know right that'd be really yeah cool. yeah i got you yeah um Let's see. Another album I wanted to talk about that I've uh, been recently listening to a lot lately is The Hounds of Foggy Notion. Mm-hmm. I've been really inspired by that one to like yeah, write more folky stuff. Is it the one on the road? Yeah, that's where they yeah, like. That was a really fun one to record. That's just all live on one stereo microphone, too. That's just yeah, a recording awesome. of where we're playing. Like we had set up a four track and, and ran microphones to stuff like in the backs of the amp so you couldn't see it in the video. Because you, you know that came from a DVD, right? Like, mm-hmm. it shot all that live. And uh, my recording sounded like shit. And the recording that the main the main filming guy had just had a, uh, like, a stereo, like, dead cat boom mic on top of the camera, you know? And mm-hmm. it sounded great, so we just went with that. But that, that was a lot of fun, recording that one. It was uh, awesome. Sometimes you have an idea, and when it's all done and you've done the idea, you can't believe you actually pulled it off. And I was one of those, like, a stupid idea, like, we should play all around San Francisco. And then it came together in the end, and I was like, Jesus, I can't believe we actually did it, you know? It's Even cool. though it's not some grandiose idea, it just came together really nice. All right. So, <laughs> actually, uh, um, when I found out uh, about about that album, I, um, I, I, I realized that, that, um, that our band, uh, so... We've we've had we had an, uh, an idea for the past like month or two or like mm-hmm. maybe a few months where where we go on a road trip and, and we go to like abandoned places and, and we set up just like uh, just like uh just instruments and we and we just and we just play there all right uh, like um great idea yeah and uh and that uh, and like listening to that like she showed us that it was possible uh, to do something right, yeah. I mean we had like a the generator which I own now but we had rented it at the time was like yeah like two days it was like a hundred bucks it takes like a gallon of gas and if you're not using giant amps those generators are great they're quiet you, you don't have to like put them really far away just make mm-hmm. sure you don't kill yourself with carbon monoxide in some weird abandoned building yeah. but yeah. i think that's a great idea man I, I mean why not you know that sounds so fun especially if you can get yeah. some people out get some some randos out in like an abandoned building yeah. just you guys play yeah. sounds great i love that yeah, idea. Oh, sick. yeah. but um seeing that uh, like uh, like sort of sort of showed us that like it was possible to do something like that to do something uh, to be that um that, that uh ambition what's it called uh, ambitious ambitious yeah yeah yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, sorry we did I, that, I think i want to say we shot that in two days because san francisco is really small so it's like those locations weren't like big drives and at the time the band had almost no gear we had like two small amps two drums you know uh everything was running through the amps so there was no pa you know um, I used yeah. a space echo for a mixer, so it had three inputs. So one was my mic, one was Bridget's mic, and then the guitar went into one channel of the amp, and the space echo went to the other one. So I was using it like a PA and an amp at the same time, which probably has a lot of uh, has a lot to do with the weird sound on that one, where it's very lo-fi, you know, very simple. But it was really fun and really quick. And then you know they edited it probably even longer than we spent playing it. You know what I mean? I didn't edit it. That was uh, Brian Lee Hughes the guy that filmed it with James Hall. Yeah. yeah, really fun one though. I rec- you guys should totally do that. I mean, uh, 
generator shows in San Francisco back in the day were a big part of like coach whips and uh, not pink and brown, but like early OCs would play on the street. We could just plug into a bus stop. Uh, I don't know. If, I'm sure they don't do that anymore. But back in the day in San Francisco, the uh, the bus stops had uh, an outlet. You know? oh. So you'd always see like a homeless guy charging his razor or his phone in there or some shit, you know, but uh, really mm -hmm. fun. And you get like, you know, because it's not a show that people are paying for, you get these awesome stragglers. Like people, like somebody with a baby, like yeah. a baby stroller watching your band, you know, just something you would never get in a club, you know? Go yeah. ahead. Cool. Yeah, thank you. That sounds awesome. Yeah, I definitely want to visit sure. uh, San Francisco sometime. Oh, yeah. Where do y'all yeah. live? We live Medford. in Medford, 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 Oregon, Oregon, which is pretty close to oh. California. Or Oregon's nice, man. It's beautiful up there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Is it you hot out there right now or no? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Everywhere. <I'm> also, Everywhere. <laughs> I just got back from visiting family in Nevada, so it was pretty hot up there, too. Yeah, yeah. I just got back. I flew in. That's why my day is so chaotic today, is because I just flew back from visiting my mom in Rhode Island. And it's like, oh, oh, dang. oh yeah. flying these days feels like a bigger pain in the ass than it's ever been. So, yeah, yeah. you got to put aside an extra swath of time on either end of the flight to make sure you, uh, you know, your responsibilities are covered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. Right. And I was also wondering, um, how you guys have like such a quick album release schedule because you you guys have like 26 albums now i mm -hmm. think yeah so it's like one and a half records a year for the whole time we've been around or something like that on on an average you know yeah what? <laughs> <laughs> uh well basically we i was always of the thought that it was cool to put out a record a year because I move quickly, my band moves quickly. We have all these ringer players who can write really fast. We improvise well together. I love recording, I love writing, I love playing live. I like all the elements of this band, you know, all the pieces. There's no, you know, some people are bad at touring or prefer not to be in a studio stuck. I like all that shit. Um, and we would try and write a record a year. What would often happen is we would just come up with more material or we'd record a live album. I think it's it's a, it's a little bit like, you know, hyperactivity meets uh, ambitious thoughts. And I mean, why not? I run my own label um, and I have plenty of labels that want to work with me that I like. So it's like, it's easy to do that. I don't really stand by the idea that you have to put out a record and then tour it to death. Like, you know, the typical uh, uh, model that's been set up for like bigger bands, you know. But also, I wouldn't expect everybody to be able to write as fast as we do. Not everybody works like that. Some people take a long time. Like, sometimes we'll take a month to write a song, and other times we'll write a song in five minutes. So it's like, I don't know. But running your own label, too, has a lot to do with the, the fabrication end of things, not merely writing and recording the record, like getting a record out. Uh, Castle Face was really good at, like, keeping a relationship going with the GZ and the Czech Republic, which is where we press our records. We've been working with them for a long time, so we got sort of like a good turnaround we have good people working for us, you know, Revolver, uh, the distribution company helps us get shit, keeps the, you know, these are all, we keep, we're surrounded by people that are, uh, they move quickly and are good at business. So it's like easy if I can write the songs to get a record out. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. That, that makes perfect sense. It's, it, it's good to have, to have a good relationship with like the record label and the band. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, these guys have, I, I was reluctant to work with them at first just because I don't even know why, but now I, I would never go any other way, you know? I yeah. thought I thought I was so DIY. I was like, I want to do it myself. And then I was like, shit, this is a lot of work. So I got people cool. that are good at their job that have, I, it's like stuff that I would never want. Like, for instance, I have a booker now. I used to book my own shows, but I haven't for years now because I have Michelle at Panache and she's like the the buffer for the irritating part of the business that I don't want to deal with. She's good at that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's also good to have like a reliable, trustable, uh, uh mm -hmm. like a uh, label and and people that you can, yeah, you know, absolutely. especially yeah. when you are the label. Yeah, so you guys are like teenagers, so you got plenty of time to learn all this on your own. You'll have plenty of mistakes and triumphs along the way, you know. Yeah, yeah. There have been a lot of times when I was your age where I was like, never again, and would do it again anyway. You know, so it takes it takes a while. I would say I didn't have my shit together until I was like. 35 probably you know so the business is uh the music business is like uh it's easy you know you can write a song and sell it over and over and over again it's not like a painting that you can sell one time right. and really essentially you're selling like a concept you know i mean it's like a feeling or whatever yeah so it's not like like i when i think about my comedian friends or uh, people that are making movies it's so much more work and it's so much more grueling 
to stand up on stage by yourself and try and make people laugh than it is for us to write a song, and put out a record. And then all I have to do is go drink some beers and show up and play them live. You know, like I have a good gig. Yeah. So if you can make it work, it's a great job, you know, but it's also, yeah. there's, there's a lot of climbing on the way there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's been really fun so far. Yeah. I think. Oh, yeah. Good. Well, you're young. This is the best part of it. Just play, you know, that you're in like, this is the good old days right now, man. <laughs> yeah. You better enjoy this, you know? Yeah. I, I, I had a little bit of a panic attack today because of that. <laughs> So that it was the good old days and it was slipping by. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because I'm like, uh, it's like right now I'm grounded. And so, uh, and oh, so good. What'd I you do, like, man? I, bad grades. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta get that, that sorted, man. Yeah. I mean, show up to PE. <laughs> show up to be. I didn't he get always... that. I got a B in PE. Uh, it was you Mr. Didn't even Dave. Show up. It was Mr. A B Dave. in PE. <laughs> Was that like rope climbing and dodgeball? I don't even know what they do in PE anymore, man. I miss dodgeball. Yeah, it's just like dodgeball. running and like running. Don't you do running. like a sport like each quarter? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, if it makes you feel any better, I was terrible at sports. I tried everything. I played baseball, soccer. I never went out for football or anything, but I hated it. I was bad at skateboarding, bad at surfing. I was so lucky to find guitar. And now I, you know, now I rock climb and run and stuff. And I, you know, when you get older, you got to kind of work harder to keep what you got but i enjoy working out now but it took me forever to find stuff i liked i was bad at sports yeah. man yeah not good I, I can never find a sport that i uh, like that like i fit in with like uh -huh. i mean i mean like i love doing football but like no one like i don't fit in and yeah and I, like I'm, I'm like five five and like right 50 pounds but like the other people are like all they, giants are like six foot 160 yep. pounds 170 pounds i mean like six four dudes like <laughs> yeah there's got to be there's a position in football for the little guy though right is that a qb well, yeah get crushed though <laughs> yeah, right yeah you just gotta be fast man you're running back well, you gotta go where else you go well i i mean you gotta, you gotta be wow. fast or you gotta be or you gotta be strong and heavy all right yeah, yeah. yeah. my brother be... played football and he's like a refrigerator so i get you yeah yeah i was on a baseball team just for fun in san francisco uh and I, I swear to God, my job was just to go buy beer and keep the grill going. I would just grill oh. hamburgers and hot dogs. I was literally on the team, but I I went up to bat like once a game, maybe. And all I wanted to do was just hang out and man the grill. So oh, like yeah. everybody, people were like, why is he on the team? But then they would drink beer and eat cheeseburgers and be like, oh, that's why he's on the yeah, team. Yeah. 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 I got it. I got it. You know, dude, right. Dude, I wish I could work something out like that. <laughs> you got plenty like, of time, right? man. You got plenty of time. Awesome. Yeah. Dude, uh, it's, like it's it's instrumentation in y'all's band. Oh, instrumentation. We have this uh weird thing going. So for like yeah. most of our song, we actually have another member, but uh mm -hmm. he's a uh, he's at the coast right now, so he can make it. Mm -hmm. But um is always vacation. But he plays sure. bass. Yep. Um sometimes he has like a few songs that he sings and plays guitar on. Mm -hmm. and you then, look like a bass player, man. <laughs> <laughs> the quiet guy that carries a big stick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And then um, we kind of switch back and forth. Like I'm kind of the designated drummer mm -hmm. and he's like the designated guitarist, vocalist, but we switch oh, kind of because like we for our set um, at the festival, we did this like because we had three songs that he was up there singing and playing guitar on. And then Brady did a bass solo. So we switched out and I went up there. There's like big, a big fan of a bass solo. We always joke around with Tim in my band that I'm going to die before him, probably, most definitely. And then oh. he's going to play Anesthesia at my funeral in front of my parents. That. <laughs> that was the inspiration behind mine. Brady, yeah. if I die before you, you play Anesthesia at my funeral. All right, I will. Yeah. I, I promise. Yeah. I'll do it. That's, That's nice a yet. good buddy. That's yeah. a good buddy right there. Thank you. He's a huge fan of Cliff Burton. Dude, love Cliff. Can't go Can't go wrong with uh, Young Metallica, for sure. Oh, big fan, yeah. big fan. Oh, that's disgusting. Yeah. What? Sorry, the what? goggles are disgusting right now. What's a, it's like mold or something? No, it's like some sort of like split, like saliva or something. Or like eye goo. Eye goo? That is disgusting. Yeah, it's like yeah. eye goo. It's like early morning eye goo. Yeah. But yeah. like not even like that. It's like sticking onto yeah. the thing. Oh. I also wanted to ask, um, how long does it take to set up for a show with two drummers? Mm -hmm. Uh... I would say the slowest we are is the first day of tour, but by day two, everybody gets on point again. And then by the end of a month long tour, we're like throwing gear up there and breaking it down. We're really good, you know? So gotta keep that thing cool, man. We could set up in 15 minutes if we're in a pinch. 
we have uh, we bring our own sound people now, and we have a mic set up uh, that's all on clips, everything. So there's no mic stands on stage except for my <laughs> mic, which is really nice. Mic stands are a pain in the ass, you know. Yeah, so yeah. it depends on how fast the club is too, though, you know. We used to never show up for sound check and then make the crowd watch us sound check, which I think was really grueling for people, which I kind of enjoyed. But we've sort of <laughs> started to get back on the tip of sound checking so we can just have dinner and play the show like normal people, you know. So, yeah, I yeah. got you. Yeah. Your live shows like look super fun to be at. You guys yeah. never seen us? I I wish there was there's this, there's you you guys are playing in Portland but that's like the only place that people ever play in Oregon right it's like it's true. Like a, it's true we're lazy we only hit major markets mostly these days <laughs> it's, it's just about I mean we do play joints that we really like we used to do a lot more smaller towns and there are some small towns that we still play in Europe especially there's a lot of little joints like in Italy we'll only play Ravenna which is this like middle of nowhere little beach town but it's just mostly cool. because I like the beach you know but it's really just out of laziness man I do apologize for that we used to that's all right we used to be able to tour for longer and now it's like we have to cram everything into a month because it's just exhausting at you know once you're over 40 man like you gotta you gotta sort of like pick and choose your battles so we we play like we'll do like five nights on and one or two nights off and try and keep it like that way so everybody can heal because you just like we play like an hour and a half two hours a night the drummers are just struggling they're suffering you know it's like i'm up there like uh like torturing them basically so you know um but yeah back in the day we would do like 30 shows in a row and i would just be destroyed when i got home even when i was your age like really young doing tours and just getting like just running myself ragged and uh i think this way tends to keep everybody a little bit happier and uh some money in their pockets you know yeah yeah how far is portland from where y'all are like uh five five or six hours no nine six see that's like uh that's like a short drive on tour (laughs) yeah Yeah. do it (laughs) but yeah it's like five hours and then if you're on tour eventually you're like it's only five hours yeah It it totally changes the meaning of of time and space when you're on the road you know yeah i'd love to see you guys live someday really cool what, uh, if you ever want to come out if you guys can get your way over to uh, portland and assuming that show is all ages i'll happily get you in if you need to bring a parent or something it's all good you know we yeah, get a lot of people bring in their like a lot of young guys bring their like they'll go with their dad and their dad actually likes our band it's like trying to show their kid our band so it's funny we'll have like a lot of that be like this is my son and the kid will be like this was great like you know but the, it's like the old guy will know about our band and not the young kid that happens a yeah. lot yeah i showed i was showing my mom your band and um yeah she really likes you guys oh bring your mom man i'm probably the same age as your mom i used to be in this band called the drums back in the day that was just me and another guy sharing a drum kit facing each other playing both sides of a kick drum and the other guy's name was anthony petrovic who was in all these great bands over the years uh but his mom he showed his mom a video of us playing and her quote was what's wrong with his face <laughs> which is to this day uh, every time i get on stage i always think what's wrong with his face and he's like what nothing nothing's wrong with his face but yeah i get it you know <laughs> going from like 40 to 50 minute albums um back in 2019 you guys released face stabber which i think is your longest album probably so, that like yeah. switching over that to- was a very bloated album <laughs> intentionally so but i remember being like even for me when i finished mixing it and like sort of putting together the orchestration and the the flow of it i was like jesus this is a long record but that was kind of the intent was like if you read the bio that came with that it talks about i think essentially how punishingly long it is and like what an obligation and how it was like lsd instead of marijuana where it's not like a little jaunt it's like an all-day affair where you're like jesus this is too long you know so like I think Blo- reverse, loaded enterprise, you know, like reverse SoundCloud rap, I think was one of the things you put. <laughs> yeah. And I've actually been enjoying a lot of contemporary hip hop lately, but I think there was this particular blend of SoundCloud mumblecore rap that was happening at the time that I found really irksome. But these yeah. days I've been finding a lot more shit that I like. So, yeah, you know. yeah. I love the stuff you like in different genres. I love the squeaky toy at the beginning of the daily heavy. Yeah, <laughs> I don't even, you know, when I did that, I was thinking like Faust because you guys, you guys know the band Faust? It's no. great uh, old German I, crowd rock band. They're great. Yeah, they yeah. do a lot of experimental weird shit, but essentially they're they're pretty rock based. But they would always do random vocal things like that. These like trills and like sort of be, or even like Gong, another German band. 
these really like kind of playful things that would actually kind of shred still. So the idea behind that was that something as ludicrous as a squeaky toy could provide like the first metronome for a song and it works. We do it live and it's funny to see people's faces when I actually break out the squeaky toy. They're like, oh, like in it's England, awesome. all these soccer thugs were like, yeah, you know, so it's fun. Yeah. yeah. And so apparently it drives everybody's dog crazy whenever they put that record on the dog if, the bow, if, so. if I ever get that album on vinyl, I'm fully prepared for that. My <laughs> I have two mini dachshunds that are like two years old. That... Oh, they love a squeaky toy, I bet. Oh, yeah. Dude, I have a question for you. Like, how do you get like uh, like your your uh, your mustache to, to be like uh, like so like uh, like elegant? <laughs> it's funny. I uh, I never grew facial hair. My dad had a mustache through my whole life, and I didn't even know I could grow one. I can't really grow a beard. I I can a little bit, but it's like Irish patchy. Mm. but uh and there's having facial hair always really bothered me because it's insanely uncomfortable and everybody i knew that had a beard a couple of my people in my band were always like you just got to get to a point where you like you know transcend that itchiness and get to like a long enough hair state that it's not bothersome and then it'll never happen again and it's totally true but what a pain in the ass to get there it feels horrible but it turns out i can grow an insane mustache i had no idea yeah. like i have a very fertile upper lip so it's just it just does that. My hair just does the things it does, you know? I have people ask me, like, all the time, I'll be on the subway or something, and somebody will be like, is that a wig? And I'll be like, yep, it's a wig. You know, <laughs> this looks fake, but it's actually real. <laughs> I don't even know, man. Just let it go, you know? I got you. Yeah. yeah. I will say one thing is it, 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 it retains smells and flavors really berserkly. So, like, if I eat, like, a taco an hour later, I have to wash it because I'll be like, oh, I can smell its tacos for the rest of the day. Oh, it's, wow. like, it's like your goggles. It's really disgusting. Yeah. yeah. Huh. Good comparison. What if you ate, like, milk? What if, what if you ate milk? Ate milk. Is that, like, like old milk where it's chunky? and the... Yeah. I try and avoid milk when possible. Not, I'm not opposed to milk, but I, I try not to get milk in my mustache. That would be repugnant. You're right. Yeah, there's I a know. lot of things that could be gross in there. Yeah, he loves milk. Yeah, no, yeah. not a kid. You look like you love milk. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Yeah. Damn, I'm, 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 I'm really short. Uh, I don't so. even know if that's an insult or not, dude. No, 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 no. no. It, 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 that's not an insult. I, 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 trust me. You look I, like you got strong bones. He does have strong bones. I've never broken yeah. a single right, bone. Three trunks. I've never broken a single bone. Neither I, have I. Oh, I've, nice. cracked, I've cracked ribs two times. I've got teeth knocked out, but I've never broken a bone. I somehow, I don't know how. I definitely, I've been hit by cars. Oh wow! Falling out a window. I think oh, I think I'm just really good at getting hurt. You know. Same, same here. Yeah, yeah I've, yeah. I've, I've, I've eaten good for you. It's, it's a good gift to have. You know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> you got another question, man. Um, I have a few. So, um. How did Castleface get started? Like, was kind of the origin? Uh, it. I didn't have any plans on starting my own label, but um, basically, I didn't have any labels really banging down my door. And then we had a couple offers from bigger labels, which is what I was going for at the time. Not like Warner Brothers, but like Sub Pop, that kind of shit. And one of them fell through just because they had basically uh, – like a jury that worked, not a jury, but you know what I mean? Like a selection of people that had to make all the decisions anonymously or the record wouldn't happen. And we did not get an anonymous yes, which is totally understandable. We're not for everybody. And then another label I was working with at the last minute decided they didn't want to do vinyl. And that was like a, that was a deal breaker for me. And a friend of mine, Brian Lee Hughes, the guy that shot Hounds of Foggy Notion, that director had money because he was shooting a lot of commercials. That was his, like his main, his day gig was, you know, uh, making commercials for TV and stuff. So he actually had some bread and he was like, let's just put it out ourselves. And uh, we don't work together anymore, but we're still friends. So, like I just did an art show at his, his gallery and stuff. Oh, cool. But uh, he basically, it was essentially like, you know, I wanted, at that point I was like, we have to start our own label because I can't get this record out. That was uh, Sucks Blood. And that was the first release. And after that, uh, I mean, there's a lot more work involved and it's it's a different world but you really can do whatever the hell you want. You know, like, I feel like I do a lot of things that if I was actually with a, if I was with somebody that was a bigger label, they'd be like, you're not doing that. Absolutely not. And I get to weigh, you know, I could just do whatever I want. And I, that definitely suits my personality because I'm 
super selfish. So I was just like, this is what we're doing, you know? Uh, but again, it is like, there's a reason that people have labels because labels have money and they do all the footwork and all the, the bureaucratic crap, you know? But yeah, Castle Face has been up and down, but I like, I like having my own label for sure. I, I like, we, because of that, we own all the rights to all the music I've ever written. Like I own every song I've ever written, except for awesome. three short sort of four tracking ones that Sub Pop put out. And this sort of explains why I want to start my own label. They own those songs in perpetuity in the known universe for eternity. So those songs I'll never get back. And that to me is uh, a really ancient, archaic model that shouldn't be used anymore. I don't think labels should be able to own people's music forever. That's a ludicrous, mm -hmm. yeah. for a very, for like a pittance of money. You know, I didn't get paid a lot. For, not that those songs were worth any money, but you know what I mean? To sell your song forever is, is weird to me. You should be able to keep yeah. your rights. Yeah. 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 So weird to me that, labels. um, that you can like write a song and then the record label just gets to keep it. It's such a well, weird. Also, if they sell it to a movie or a commercial, they take most of that money. You know, uh, I mean, that kind of work. We own our rights. We don't get a ton of play. They're, they're called placements when you get something placed in a movie or whatever. We don't get a ton of those, but when we do, we get to keep all the money, which is nice. Cause cool. if you get a big one, that could be a substantial, you know, chunk of income for the band. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I split everything evenly. So if somebody's on the record with me, if they're playing drums or whatever, let's say there's four of us that wrote the record together, uh, we split the profit four ways. So everybody gets paid the same in my band. It's sort of like a weird socialist setup, but that way nobody's unhappy. People, everybody is on the same page. We're all together, you know. Yeah. yeah. It's like we got a minute left. You want to bang one more out? Um, I had a couple, yeah. you know, more fun questions, just short ones. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, if you could collaborate with any band uh, or artist, what band would it be? I actually wrote a record last year to try and get Malcolm Mooney to sing on it. Who's the original uh, singer from can who I'm in touch with on and off. And he's a really nice guy, but he basically was like, nah. <laughs> so I'm working on, I have some other ideas for who's going to sing on it. Uh, yeah. Cool. But yeah, he straight up was like, Nope. <laughs> All right. Um, anything else you want to say or promote before? the zoom meeting we're about to go on the road and like i said if you guys want to come out to a show in portland if you can figure it out i'll happily get you in you have my email address hello to the world i hope this gets you some views your podcast is fun i hope your band does well you know Thank but you. really i don't know just stay busy man you know idle hands get get better in school so you're not grounded milk boy what's wrong with you man <laughs> listen, I'll, listen i'll try <laughs> i'll try right on right on. well good luck with everything y'all hope right. you see each other again. and if you want send the link over when you put it up or whatever, and I'll have the label posted, okay?